Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 25th, 2021, or around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including what could be a tropical depression or storm that forms in the Atlantic Basin, and what may be impacting Mexico over the next couple of days on the Eastern Pacific side. Let's go ahead and jump straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon and parts of the Eastern Pacific. We notice that we have a new tropical storm in the Eastern Pacific Basin, and this could become a very potent hurricane over the next couple of days, threatening coastal Mexico. And for you folks there, this will be uh, an impact. Their tropical storm watches have been issued for parts of the Mexican coastline. And this may be even something to watch down the road for the Baja Peninsula. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. And then we also have uh, Invest Area 95L in the Atlantic Basin coming off the coast of Africa with more energy behind it. And this is going to be what we'll be watching over the next several days in the Atlantic Basin as this tries to move gradually off towards the west here and then west-northwest eventually. Uh, development chances have waned on this because this is a very large wave, very unfavorable conditions to the north of this system. Uh, and we've kind of been talking about that, that this is a very fragile setup. And I think we're starting to see the uh, fragileness of the system really kind of come into play Nonetheless, this does have some uh, decent convection, especially in these depressed intertropical convergence zone, but this definitely gives us a signal to what to look towards later in this season. So looking at here at the new tropical storm in the eastern Pacific, again, this is expected to become a hurricane by tomorrow morning, if not really late tonight. And we have tropical storm watches that are in effect for parts of the Mexican coastline here uh, as a result of how close this could get. Now, it's very large size. Uh, again, does prompt, its largeness prompts there to be this tropical storm watch. Now, uh, this probably will not be upgraded unless if the models start bringing this very close here on towards the right side of this track. But uh, what we'll notice is that, again, this is expected to become a powerful hurricane and stay offshore here. Uh, but this is eventually expected to turn back kind of very slowly. It's expected to kind of slow down uh, in through here. You can notice that these points aren't really spread out something like you would see like that. It's not really that spread out. And because it's not really that spread out, this is going to be a very slow moving system, meaning this is going to pump in a lot of heavy rainfall to parts of the Mexican coastline. And notice here the southern tip of the Baja Peninsula here is in that cone uh, over the next five days. Now again, the cone is just where the center is going to be going. It's not where the impacts are going to be extending. And the impacts on this, in this case, it's going to be a very broad system. And uh, because of that, you're going to have heavy rainfall that will be impacting parts of Mexico. And some of the remnant moisture in the mid-levels may get carried all the way up into New Mexico and Arizona to start the uh, season there uh, in terms of the potential for there to be the, um, the monsoon season. And that's going to be very important because that's going to play out again in, in terms of how everything ends up going from there on forward. Now, in the Atlantic side, we have Invest Area 95L, which this system has been kind of off and on over the last couple of days. Uh, we saw development chances really increase on this system uh, into yesterday, and now development chances have backed off to now 20% over the next five days. And I think, honestly, the development chances will continue to lessen. The reason for this, again, this is now going to be getting too far north. And you can see that the Lesser Antilles here, this is Barbados right here, the Lesser Antilles right here. And this is going to continue to move off towards the west-northwest over the next several days and gain latitude. And one of the things here, if we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity map, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, for context, these reds and whites, that's the higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. And what we've really gone to notice here is that we've been developing this trend uh, where this vort max, which is concentrated right near about 10 degrees north latitude, is getting picked up too far northward. And then eventually it will start moving west, but it's still gaining latitude. And you really have a very significant bout of unfavorable uh, environment uh, through this area, especially... Uh, once you get uh, to the east here of 50 degrees west, you start to really lose a lot of significant potential for tropical cyclone genesis. Your better odds are closer into home at this point within this part of the world. And that's typically where we look for development this time of the year anyway. 
But by and large, the system is just getting too far north. And because of it, the sea surface temperatures are really lacking in that environment. And one of the other things, too, is we notice that right now vertical wind shear is not really high. But if we look here at the visible satellite imagery, we'll notice a couple of very important things. Our system is rather broad. We don't really have a well-consolidated area of vorticity. In fact, I believe the vort max is actually probably somewhere within here. Now, could this maybe become a very brief tropical depression for 12 or 24 hours? Yes, there is still that possibility. But notice what we have going on to the north. We have a large bout of Saharan air. And we can see this better on the zoomed out visible here. We have a large bout of Saharan air that is coming in across this region right now. And because of this is a very broad circulation, this will be starting to entrain some of that Saharan air uh, into the system. We have a large bout of westerly winds that are here at uh, the surface. And we have easterly winds here at about, uh, you know, uh, roughly at about 850 millibars or so. And this is causing some background vorticity, but this is also causing these westernlies here to bring in some of this uh, drier, more stable air at the surface and being forced into it. And because of that, uh, we end up with a problem for tropical cyclone genesis, and we just can't really get easterly winds to work down to the surface because we have a strong westerly wind event, especially here at the lower latitudes. Uh, so we're really having a tough time concentrating in an area of spin and the further north this ends up getting, if it ends up getting to 15 north, this thing is basically over. Um, really, development chances will basically end here. I mean, their really development chances are already kind of minimal at this point. Uh, but they'll continue to decrease the further north latitude this uh, thing ends up getting. Uh, so this is really kind of one of the things that we're going to have to kind of look for uh, in, in terms of substantial development. Because if we don't get the system to, to move too far more towards the north, development chances will kind of remain meager but they'll be there. Uh, but the further north this gets, the bottom line, the further north this gets, the less chance this has for development. And especially once it gets, you know, north of, you know, 12, 13 north latitude, it's just gone. Now, we do have more waves coming off the coast of Africa, and some of the models have been excited about that, but we kind of know how the trend is be. Uh, these waves are, are really strongly modeled here, uh, you know, to come off the coast and develop, and then they kind of fall apart as they move out because it's only June 25th. It's not August 25th, but this gives us a sign to what to look towards later down the road. <clears throat> and to kind of further corroborate this again, this is the upper ocean heat content environment. Uh, this updated as of this morning. Again, tropical cyclones love to upwell cooler water. And if you have high upper ocean heat content, which is what the right side of the scale represents anywhere from these uh, lighter blue shades uh, onwards towards the, the, the warmer colors, that's pretty sufficient upper ocean heat content for a hurricane or, or a tropical storm to work with. And our system right now, this is 10 degrees north latitude right here. And where our system is, it's sitting roughly in about this region in through here. It's sitting roughly in about here. And because of that, uh, the system now that continues to move towards the west-northwest like that, it's going to encounter a very unfavorable environment in the conditions just really won't be as favorable for tropical cyclone genesis as it moves generally off towards the west. And because of that, the chances have been lowered. Uh, water temperatures. Now, if this was probably like late August, we would probably have a storm or hurricane that ends up kind of forming in that environment. But unfortunately, we just don't work. Fortunately, uh, but unfortunately for the storm, we don't have uh, the, the sufficient requirements for that. But fortunately for us, for us humans, we don't have to deal with whatever this, this could have been. Uh, so thankfully, uh, that's kind of one of those things there. But we notice that closer to home, uh, where most of everyone lives in the Northern Hemisphere, we have a lot of very uh, warm waters and high upper ocean heat content, especially in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And that is what does worry me, or not really worry me, but it does raise my interest and kind of uh, you know, it definitely raises an eyebrow that if you get a system to kind of come in through there and the, the wind shear, you know, the, the upper level environment is there, the moisture is there, uh, you could have a very strong system that ends up developing in there. Now, thankfully, like I said, this is June 25th, but this matters going forth in time. If you get something to come take advantage of that, you know, it's going to take advantage of that. And we saw that last year. We know how that played out. So we don't really need a lesson on that. But you know, again, we've seen waves do interesting things. So I'm not ruling out development. 
Uh, but once this starts getting closer to the lesser Antilles, I think development chances will be pretty much over. And the reason why we can take a look at this here on the GFS 8, uh, 850 Vorticity map, uh, this is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. The here's uh, our Tropical Wave 95L done very broad system, so that's also not helping, you know, because we, we can't get consolidation fast. And because of that, uh, we just aren't really going to be having the potential uh, for this to really kind of come together and for all the flavors to kind of mix. And uh, again, we can see here on the GFS again, we maybe get a little bit of a spin up here within 24 hours. And uh, even this here, it's sitting at about the 11 to 12 degrees north. And we'll take a look at this just real briefly here on the forecast model to kind of see what we're looking at. Again, the GFS doesn't really have a lot of shear. Uh, we aren't dealing with a lot of shear, but we do have a little bit of a capping inversion. Uh, and because of that, uh, the, the thunderstorms are not really able to go up in the atmosphere. And we talk about this in severe weather setups where we like to see, uh, you know, we're going to have to see whether the cap breaks or not. And uh, we talk about this in severe weather setups. If you get capping, it basically is a low level um, inversion of warm air. Uh, relatively compared to the parcel rising, the air surrounding it is warmer than the parcel rising. And uh, because of that, you can't get continued growth of um, Pileonimbus clouds. You can't get growth of thunderstorms because the parcels cannot rise because the air is warmer. And when you have that set up, you just don't get convection to develop. And uh, it's not a really strong cap here, but you kind of notice it. Just a weak little uh, capping inversion here and another one here at about 500 millibars. Uh, and kind of just remains all to the right here of the parcel. And because of that, you just don't really have a lot of convection that's being generated in this area. And when you start to not, when you start to kind of lose all of that convection, uh, you just get a very dry wave. The precipitable water amounts are fairly high at about 2.14 inches. Uh, so a little less than two and a quarter. If you look here at the moisture on the GFS, what we'll notice is that again, here's our low level westernlies. And the system seems to have established a low pressure center uh, within 24 hours from now. This is about 1,009 millibars. So like I said, you know, a brief spin up into a tropical depression isn't necessarily unlikely, but it's just not the most favorable setup right now. But again, short term trends are going to dictate that. So it's just kind of important. But once we start getting uh, past that, we kind of notice that we have some very dry conditions out here. And this starts to become a dry wave. If we look at a sounding representative of the environment, we notice that we still have some pretty strong capping. And the shear, although it's not particularly strong, we have a lot of mid-level dry air. And that mid-level dry air is what's going to be causing uh, dry air from the mid-levels to be uh, rushed down to the surface. And that kind of dries out this wave as you just don't get a lot of associated convection with it. And then by the time this approaches the Lesser Antilles, now this will have a little bit more moisture to work with and it actually may dip a little bit further south. And uh, when that happens, uh, we can take a look here at the 200 millibar wind pattern. Uh, and what you'll kind of end up noticing is that we have some fairly strong winds here as a result of a tropical upper trosopheric trough, this uh, right here. And you also have this ridge of high pressure in the far upper levels of the atmosphere uh, off the coast of the northeast. And this is shoving our tropical uh, trough uh, down across here, and it's promoting a lot of strong upper-level winds that are cutting across here. And you have something of an upper-level uh, low that's kind of sitting over here near Central America. And uh, with that, you have a lot of winds that are kind of coming out of the south here. And when you have that, you can kind of tell that this environment is not really favorable, and you do start to increase your shear and your relative humidity really dries out. You don't really have a very high relative humidity area. And if we look back at the moisture, uh, if we look back here at the moisture field and we kind of do a sounding of this environment, what we'll notice is that the shear is still in, eh, but we still have a lot of mid-level dry air. And that is probably going to be one of the things that will be suppressive uh, for tropical development. And then uh, if we kind of continue out towards later uh, during that time, we'll notice that again, we maybe have a little bit more of uh, favorable conditions towards later, maybe in the Caribbean even, but the strong trade winds should continue to rush this far off to uh, towards the east here or, or towards the uh, west rather. 
And if we kind of just take a real quick look here at maybe kind of a sounding across this environment, we notice that we have some pretty strong upper level winds here, and that should basically end development chances from there. European model, the 12Z European, again, just maybe a very brief spin up within a 24 hour period. Uh, but then, then after that, uh, this wave will be approaching the Lesser Antilles by day five as an open trough. Not really going to be seeing much development chances after that. European ensembles uh, I do kind of corroborate that again. This is where we, we are at here within 24 hours with maybe what could be a weak depression or maybe even a weak storm in that region. But then after that, most of the models basically uh, kill this wave and only leave it with maybe a couple. Uh, and then curiously, though, models do regenerate something uh, after the day five period with either a, another wave or the southern branch of this wave. We'll just have to kind of monitor how that all plays out. Uh, the GFS ensembles, we'll take a look at that real quick. The GFS ensembles uh, in the uh, ensemble mean sea level pressure. Uh, now, the GFS here does have something that kind of does peak after day five, really. But if you look here, this is day five. Our wave right now doesn't really have a lot of support, maybe a little bit more back here. Uh, but after that, really, not going to be watching for much potential uh, after that. And then July should be relatively quiet uh, as expected. So hopefully we'll catch a little bit of a break here. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.